In this video, I will reveal this month's biggest risers and fallers in the FTSE 100 and all the upcoming key dividend dates that you need to know about. This is not financial advice, so please do your own research. So who are the biggest risers in the FTSE 100? Up 13.5% is Anglo-American. This company mines copper, cobalt, nickel and zinc. Not only are these metals in short supply, but they have several primary uses including renewable power generation, electric vehicles and energy storage. Commodities such as metals usually do well in times of inflation. Dividend yield is 6%. Up 14.7% is BP. In May, BP announced a huge first quarter loss when it exited from the Russian market. Despite this, the share price has done well recently amid soaring oil and gas prices and the dividend yield is currently 4%. What happens next is difficult to predict. The windfall tax imposed by the Chancellor recently will certainly have an impact on profits and we are seeing a slowdown in growth recently in China and negative forecasts in Europe over the next two years, which could eventually turn undersupply to oversupply. I've recently been making significant changes to the amount of oil shares I hold in my portfolio and I'll be revealing all in a future video. At number 3, up 16.5% is the Irish bookmaking company Flutter Entertainment, which was created from a merger of Betfair and Paddy Power. The shares have soared recently after positive first quarter figures. UK and Ireland revenue fell slightly, but this was more than compensated for from expanded legislation for sports and betting across US jurisdictions. No dividend is paid currently. At number two, up 17.3% is Barclays. Barclays has had a difficult year, but over the last month it's seen renewed demand for its shares. This month, the bank has started a buyback program where it intends to buy a billion pounds worth of its own shares and then cancel them. The share price should increase as there will be fewer shares in circulation. If you own the shares, then you will have more of a stake in the company. This buyback program will continue until September. So with Barclays shares potentially being given a new lease of life, could this be the time to buy them? I've been holding back so far, but I'm now tempted to add a few more and capitalize on this momentum. I've been buying and selling Barclays shares for over 13 years, but you must make your own decisions. Financial stocks tend to be quite volatile, especially in uncertain times. Dividend yield is 3.5%. And just before I reveal this month's highest riser, you may want to consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any future market updates. And the highest climber this month, up 29.3% is the British multinational bank Standard Chartered. Just like HSBC, the bank has ambitions for exploiting the metaverse and it's believed that this will likely infiltrate every sector in some way in the coming years. The bank has a bright outlook and it is also capitalizing on fast-growing financial product demand in Asian and African markets. Dividend yield is 1.5%. And now for the FTSE 100's biggest fallers this month. At number 5, down 14.4% is Avast, one of the largest tech stocks in the UK and is part of the booming cybersecurity industry. The company is currently pursuing a £6 billion deal with Norton, but the government has put it on hold for six months, citing competition concerns. This has caused the tech stock to fall sharply. Dividend yield is 2.7%, but could this be the time to put a bargain tech stock into your portfolio? At number 4, down 14.8% is Scottish Mortgage Investment Trust. This company has done pretty well in the decade after the global financial crisis, rising over 700%. But the trust is highly exposed to tech companies, which did well during the pandemic, but now there seems to be a general market aversion to tech companies. Amazon and Tesla are among its top 10 holdings, and also Chinese large caps such as Alibaba and Tencent. Dividend yield is 0.5%. At 
At number three, down 15% is Hikma Pharmaceuticals. Hikma operates in a very competitive sector and has downgraded its revenue forecast due to an earlier than expected launch of a rival product in the United States. Dividend yield is 2.5%. At number two, down 18.3% is a British property investment company, Segro. Shares in Segro have plunged to their lowest in six months after downgrades from analysts. During lockdown, warehouse owners were in huge demand because of surging online shopping with retailers scrambling for extra storage space to cope with the high volume of orders. Now with lockdown over, many people are reverting to their old behaviour and are going out to the shops instead. What's your view on this? Sometimes fortunes can be made by going against the current popular trend. I've no idea what will happen. Dividend yield is 2.2%. And the biggest fall of this month, down 21.9%, is Aviva. But don't panic, the fall in the share price is not what it seems. Aviva has sold eight businesses worth over £7.5 billion from around the globe and is handing the money back to shareholders. It's known as a return of capital. In very simple terms, the company is now not as big, so the share price will be lower. But the shareholders have received a capital payment. As an example, I've held roughly £8,000 in Aviva shares, which were suddenly worth £6,000 overnight. However, the cash payment I received was approximately £2,000, so I neither gained or lost overall. The way Aviva have done this is slightly more complex, but the overall result is the same. But now I have a decision to make. Do I put the cash back into Aviva, now it is a smaller company, or do I keep it for a while to snap up bargains in a volatile market? Or do I simply put it into an index tracker? Decisions, decisions. A few years ago, a similar thing happened to Vodafone when it sold its 45% stake in Verizon, a very profitable part of its business. At the time, I put the cash back into Vodafone, but the shares started to slide and I ended up selling them. I've not returned since. Let me know in the comments what you would do with the Aviva return of capital. The yield is currently 5%. And now for the ex-dividend dates for the month ahead. 18 companies go ex-div in June, and if you hold the shares before this date, you are entitled to the dividend on the payment date. As an example, I own shares in National Grid, which goes ex-div on the 1st of June and I'll receive 33.76 pence for every share held, and I'll be paid this on the 17th of August. I hold 1,378 shares in National Grid, so on the 17th of August, I should expect to see a cash payment of £465. The other company which I own on this list is United Utilities, which goes ex-dividend on the 23rd of June. They pay 29 pence a share. I hold 704 shares in United Utilities and so will expect to be paid £204 on the 1st of August. And now for the payment dates in June. There are 15 companies in the FTSE 100 paying out in June. I hold seven of them. BAE Systems pay out on the 1st, Croda on the 6th, Unilever on the 16th, Tesco and BP on the 24th, Shell on the 27th, and finally Imperial Brands on the 30th. Look out for my dividend unboxing videos where I reveal all of these payments. Now, just for interest, here are the highest yields in the FTSE 100. Rio Tinto is currently the highest payer with 11%, closely followed by the house builder Persimmon at 10.5%. There is usually more risk of a dividend cut with higher yielders, so as always, please do your own research. Please give this video a like if you found it useful. See you next time and happy investing!